live tonight from Southern California. The NASCAR PK to Freeze iRacing Series continues its West Coast swing with a trip to the City of Action tonight for the third race of its 2018 season. And it has been just two weeks since we were last in action for the ISM Raceway where we saw Keegan Leahy become the second race winner in two races to open up this 2018 campaign. And as we get set to go 200 mile an hour plus racing this evening from the Auto Club Speedway, we catch up with the action from last time out with a look at this week's iRacing race recap. Michael Conti, no hesitation in the American Ethanol green flag, and we are underway from Phoenix for the second race of this NASCAR Pegana Freeze iRacing series campaign. Challenge for the race lead, short lived Lady tucks in line second, and it is a free for all walks to dog leg for the first time as they spread them wide. The battle for the race lead, all of a sudden Michael Conti has lost that big advantage that he had last time he checked in. It was at eight tenths of a second. But you're looking at a side-by-side -side for, for the race lead at lap number 13, the five car. You can see the desperation way down 20 feet below that yellow line in the center of the dog leg. It's wide open. You can go as long as you want down there, all the way up against the inside wall. But again, you did see that five really struggle with the push into the quarter. That's the downside in the 24 Leahy outside, new race lead. And lap number 14, Keegan Leahy goes to the point, and Conti falls back to second. See if he can keep that Chevrolet assess in front of the rest of the field as he takes no hesitation and brings a three car length advantage to the green flag. For the third restart, we see the top two get single file. Well, maybe not. Here comes the 15 and Novak taking a peek to the inside, trying to make something happen for position number two. I'll follow that top side. And first time we've seen Michael Conti all night long in traffic. He sits in fifth. And it's gonna be tight off of pit road though, and the race to the lawn is not gonna be Keegan Leahy. How about Ray Alfala in the number two Ford? Comes down pit road, goes for the four tires just like everybody else. To oh, Ray Alfala, now he's down. gonna come back down. This is big, so that means that 24 car, he's gonna be the lead car. And where is Ray Alfala gonna cycle out? Could they be really, really tied on fuel? I know we were thinking 50, but 41 laps to go. Keegan Leahy, best car all night inside of row two and third. With the two fresh tires at the right side, only a lot of beating and banging as John Davies does not want to go. And they finally push the front row up to speed as we go back racing with 10 laps to go. Look for the 24 car on the speed, and there he goes, the bump and run. He'll rock it to the race lead, and there they go behind as the 0-2 of Ergeron in front of the field. For Leahy, he's just going to have to be able to make it home at this point. Again, this race is not going to restart. Here's another one coming up through the ranks of sim racing and iRacing and making a mark and making a big mark here this evening at ISM Raceway. He'll light it up. First career victory in this series. And by the way he's run, I don't think this is the last time he'll be able to light it up and do these burnouts. That's his Fidel Racing Team Virtual Racing School Chevrolet burning it down on the front straightaway. The driver out of Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada celebrating his first career win. It was all Keegan Leahy. On my team are Truex, Logano, Larson, Blaney, Chase, and Suarez. For the rest of you, better luck next week. She's missing out, dude. Yeah. The all-new NASCAR <laughs> Fantasy Live. Visit NASCAR.com slash fantasy and build your team today.
road to $10,000 rolls through the Golden State as N Pass stays westward. In the middle of a West Coast swing, where tonight we go sim racing from Fontana at the Virtual Auto Club Speedway on Race Spot TV and our racing live. And it is from high above the Auto Club Speedway in the booth where we say good evening, sim racing fans, and welcome to tonight's Fontana 125, the third race on this 2018 NASCAR Pagan Freeze I Racing Series alongside myself, Evan Pasoko, Tim Terry, Randy Chenneth upstairs with you as always. Our producer downstairs, Hugo Luis, is twisted and tweaking the dials and bringing us to you this evening. And Tim, very different racetrack coming into tonight. We open up the season, obviously, with a trip to Daytona International Speedway. Big, fast, two and a half miler. We shortened things up two weeks ago from Phoenix. And we'll slide right in the middle here tonight with a two-mile D-shaped oval in Fontana. Yeah, you mentioned a completely different racetrack than what we've had the first two rounds of this series. And I, I don't know if we're going to see much different from what we saw two weeks ago at Phoenix because Keegan Leahy fast once again. But these drivers are going to try to make their way a little bit closer to the top of the point standings. Good run here will definitely help that. And obviously finding the success that he had those two weeks ago when he took the car to Victor Belenke. He comes into tonight, Randy, as your leader in the championship standings. Of course, obviously a long way to go before we start talking about playoff rounds. But Ottinger, Conti, Alfala, Duval names inside of the top five. Zelensky, Busa, Bordeaux, Schoenberg, and Bias. All familiar suspects up there in the top ten in the championship standings. And he's had a very good start to the year as well. And hoping to continue that success coming into tonight's race, Fontana, very similar to Michigan International Speedway. We'll see that one a little bit later on this year for round number eight. I'm not sure if it's a little bit too early in the year to really be drawn conclusions back and forth to him, but this is a very fast and wide racetrack. 125 laps on tap for us tonight because we've got 250 miles to sort it out. So just because you're fast in the practice session guarantees you nothing. That's the big thing. We've seen a couple weeks that cars that start out in front don't always end up finishing there we saw michael Conney take the pole last week and kind of struggle once we got into the race conditions the key lee in that 24 already having a 10 point advantage over everyone else in this championship if he can keep up any of this momentum whatsoever he's looking to have a potentially dominant year in that 24. We look at the racetrack as well at Auto Club that appears, Tim, to at least be wide open coming into this one. Hard to pinpoint who's going to be fast other than the drivers who may just be feeling it so far this year. Been to this racetrack four other times every year since 2014. Nick Ottinger was the first driver to win at this racetrack back in its first time at a calendar. Kenny Humpy in 15, Ray Alfala 2016, and most recently Ryan Luza on his run last season with a trip here to Victory Lane just one year ago. So another racetrack with no repeat wins. Winners. And I think if we continue to kind of follow that stat over the course of the year, we'll start to realize that uh, most of the racetracks we see on this calendar don't have a majority of repeat winners. That's how often that we see the, I guess, the change of pace and the seniority in this series cycle through is really anybody has a shot on any given week. And now that we're in the third week, though, of this season, I think we're starting to figure out who's got what, who has to improve on things, and that'll continue for at least a few more races. Keep in mind, competition really stiff in this series, Evan. Those four winners that you mentioned are in this race tonight, but it's going to be hard to defend and get back to victory lane here at Auto Club as we get ready to go racing here for 125 laps. It never hurts that a lot of those names as well, past series champions in this NASCAR PK to Freeze the I Racing Series. It's going to be a long, fast one tonight. We're happy that you're with us, as always, on a Tuesday evening as we go trackside and take a look at tonight's Race Spot TV starting grid. Speaking of speed, the 2-4 of Keegan Leahy up front. He will qualify on pole for tonight's Fontana 125, and he will bring us to the green flag alongside a previous winner here in Fontana. It'll be Ryan Michael loses starting in second. Brad Davies, Cody Bias going to make up road two. They start third and fourth respectively. Zach Novak rounds out your top five. Dylan Duvall comes off a top five finish two weeks ago. He'll start in sixth. Michael Conti in seventh. Taylor Hurst in eighth. Corey Vincent in ninth. And completing your top ten, it's Yarrow Tien. Going to be on through Logan. 11th position is David Rattler, 12th spot. Going to be Derek Bordeaux. Logan Clamp at his 13th position. Brian Schoenberg, 14th. Blake Reynolds around out the top 15. 16th place, we're going to have Colton Davis with Jimmy Mullis in 17th. Ray Alfala, 18th. Matt Boos, the 19th. And Christian Challen are rounding out the top 20. 
Marcus Richardson's going to find himself in 21st. Nick Onger with him on row 11. They'll start in 22nd spot. Nolan Scott, 23rd. Casey Tucker, 24th. And Andrew Fayash, the 3rd in 25th. Guys that need to work, Alex Berger on 26, Michael Guest 27, Timmy Hill in 28th, Bobby Zielinski deep in the field in 29th, and Brandon Pipgrass in 30th. 31st going to be Nicholas Shelton, 32nd for Casey Kerwood. His cars roll off for the pit lane, Chris Shearburn, 33rd, Philip Diaz, 34th, and Chris Overland in 35th. 36th, Joe Letterello with Kenny Humpy, Adam Gilliland, Ryan Lowe, and Jake Sturgios rounding out the field. Top to the bottom and how they will roll off with a look at a race spot TV starting grid. Already talked a little bit about what we are to expect to see here tonight. The Auto Club Speedway, two mile D shaped oval, 125 laps. We will go 250 miles start to finish in this one. Draft going to be a very big factor and again could serve as a little bit of a preview for the midway point in the regular season in a couple of weeks time when we head to the Michigan International Speedway. But as always, we're happy that you're spending a Tuesday evening with us on Race Spot TV at iRacing.com slash live. The pace car going to head down to the safety of the pit lane this time and the field is going to be the hands of Keegan Leahy. This group has gotten a lot of good looks at the back bumper of the 24 Chevrolet. We'll see if Leahy can go back to back and continue that momentum right here, right now with the American Ethanol Green Flag Flies. And we are NASCAR Pekana Freeze iRacing Series racing in Fontana. Third race of 2018 up to speed. And top two quickly get single file. It's the 21 of Bias on the outside. And there's Brad Davies on the inside. Remember back to ISM Raceway, he played that pit strategy at the end of the race. Got himself a little bit of a better finish. Right now up in third. No pit strategy required to get that starting position. Always makes your life a little bit easier, but you can start out in a better spot. You see that first battle is for fourth as the top three cars are single file off into the corner. It's now going to return into a battle for fifth position. And Zach Novak has cleared that five on the inside of Michael Conti, who's trying to make something work. He will also be cleared by Cody Bias. So Conti looked to the inside, wasn't able to really get anything cooking on that one. The top three all remain exactly where they started. Novak does go plus one on a bias, and Conti wins it going down one position on the inside of the racetrack. These drivers are going to look to as best as they can try to single file out and get some spacing, but those high speeds in that draft is going to make it very difficult to get away from everybody else. So we're going to have to watch see the 74 Taylor Hurst fight side by side with the 42 of Dylan Duvall through corners number three and four. Nothing off that corner they are going to come and I think that 74 machine going to have a good advantage, but no, the 42 car looks like in real life looking good up on that top side. Himself a spot in line. That's the red number 42 machine. You saw a dart to the inside. Dylan Duvall trying to make something work early as he lost two spots off at the start of this race. He's got the 04 and Eric Bordeaux up on his outside, and he will clear Bordeaux. And then in turn number two, the 10 car of Corey Vincent wants to get in on the action. He's on the left hand side as you run on board with Bordeaux down the back straightaway. He'll have to take the higher line down at this end of the racetrack in three and four. You'll start to see that blue number 10 peak Chevy and Vincent creep forward on the inside. In fact, with two wide, two rows deep, coming out of turn four. And he's bringing a friend along with him. There's Brian Schoenberg. There's a home track native from California looking to pick up at least a top 10 finish here at this Auto Club Speedway to the inside of Vincent. And then you have that Bordeaux machine on the outside as well, trying to work his way a little bit closer towards the front of the field. And Yarl Tien, also a part of this battle, is taking up at a corner number two and race down the back straight away. Battles all over this racetrack. Even Conti taking a look to the inside of Davies by the looks of it. He wants to make it three wide for third. The top two try to pull away, but that's the fight on track right now. But it's caught in the inside. He used that lower line right off of the green fly to get a couple of spots. And he will get two with one swing of the bat there. Michael Conti going to go fifth to third as he passes both Zach Novak and Brad Davies. Davies is going to end up in the same spot through all of that. It's really Novak who falls third to fifth. Conti jumps fifth to third in that exchange. And number five machine has had a good couple weeks. The 42 of Dillinger Ball is all sorts of loose on the entry into one. Manages to get it woed up and saved, but the 55 of Brian Schoenberg had to get way out of it. They're going to fan out nearly three wide down this long back straightaway here at Fontana. The 42 is going to defend down low, while the 74 of Taylor Hurst is going to take a look up top. 
the 42 machine did a good job of hanging on. It was Schoenberg who got into his back end, and we're going to go three wide again. The 42 struggling, coming up off of the quarter, and it is a three wide run down the front stretch here. This battle right now going on for the sixth or seventh and eighth position as well. That three car, Jarl Tien, thought about making it four wide, thinks better of it. It'll now be just Schoenberg and the 42 and Duval, bottom we bottom into the quarter. And once again, the inside line, the place to be. Schoenberg wins out in all of that. And some of these guys in this battle racing like there's six laps to go, not six laps into the race. Schoenberg picks up that spot, and look who's creeping into the picture. There's Logan Clampett in the 46 car. He's their spotlight driver here this evening, driving for Richmond Raceway and the Chaos crew. And so far, so good, working his way up closer towards the front of the field. Started in position number 13, trying to crack that top 10 as he runs down the front straightaway. And you can see what he's seeing down into corner number one. Hey, Logan Clampett going to be our featured driver for tonight's race all year. We'll have an opportunity to take a look in with some of the competitors. And Logan Clampett is going to be the headlight of our spotlight tonight, if you will. The driver at Mesa, Arizona, running with the number 46 on the side of his Toyota Camry. Runner-up from the 2017 NASCAR Pekan Freeze iRacing Series. The driver who has tested a dirt focus midget at Ventura Raceway on the real world side of things. High school senior, one of the drivers competing in this NASCAR Pekan Freeze design racing series is up a couple of spots and into the top 10 and that tells me everybody's going to enjoy riding along with Logan a couple of times tonight one of the fan favorites as well it's a pretty good start to his 2018 campaign really is he made, made a lot of fans the last couple of years picked up that first win of his NASCAR BKA Free Series I Racing Championship career at New Hampshire and ever since he sort of carried that momentum through finished top four in the championship last season and he's got a nice running spot for where he is right now up in the top nine and I think he's gonna be pretty happy that these guys out in front of him have calmed things down and stopped getting their way three wide 250 mile race and everyone is starting to get themselves single filed out and I mentioned that the draft is going to make it a little bit difficult for drivers to get a lot of gaps out of one another. You're not going to not see this single file. You're going to definitely have that, but there will be groups of cars. You're going to constantly find yourself around somebody at all times. It is going to mean that any time you make a mistake, you can guarantee somebody's going to be there to jump on you. You see the 04 car on the inside. Not a lot of room there. It looked like Derek Bordeaux was trying to get back to the gas, and the three Jarl and had no intentions of giving him any space. Now Rattler thinking about crossing him over in the 09 car he will go to the inside and this will be a fight for 12th and 13th position on the racetrack single file in front of these guys and jimmy mullis a part of that battle as well it came off a second place finish at ism raceway trying to make his way closer towards the front of the field great run early by rattler as well on the inside trying to pick up that spot on bordeaux but you mentioned it you see these packs of racing it, it's hard to get away from somebody except maybe Michael Conti. He's running in third all by himself right now, but uh, even the battle for the lead starting to heat up a little bit. Ryan Luza recovering from the uh, collarbone, the shoulder injury that he had a couple weeks ago. He's all over the back bumper of Keegan Leahy, pressuring that number 24 as they go into corner number three. And we mentioned it was impressive how well Luza was able to do even with that hindering him and uh, you know obviously try to move forward from that with a long way to go in 2018 you look out the back of your race leader Keegan Leahy and he is getting absolutely traced to high to low by Ryan Luza tucked into the number two position and that's why Michael Conti is kind of in no man's land back there you see him in third then fourth spot Zach Novak and then Cody Bias is where things start to group back up at the top two definitely showing they are the fastest on track at the moment and Loser wants to make this one a fight. Lap number 11 to the inside. And we're going to go side by side for the race lead from Fontana. Leahy very wide into the corner. And easy does it for Ryan Loser, who takes over the race lead for the first time tonight. Nice, easy pass from Ryan, who's likely still driving with that injured collarbone. As Evan just said, he's driving with one hand out at Phoenix. Now that number 24 car, who's had such a good start to the season, I think he's likely just going to calm himself down and chill in behind Ryan. No point in getting over aggressive right here, right now. Got the driver that won the championship last season out in front of your windshield. You are definitely also the second best car on the track right now. Going to come down, have a chance to come down pit road several times today, potentially get yourself quicker. I think we might see Ryan potentially check out a little bit right here though. 
we always wonder in long races like this, especially at a racetrack like this, I would think more so than a place like ISM Speedway, a smaller racetrack where you expect things to a little be a bit more rough and tough, if you will, that we're going to have green flag runs in this kind of a race and expecting drivers to try to pace themselves, be able to work on what they're going to do over the course of a long run and obviously try to remain as not lenient, but just take things easy. Don't burn up the race car. Don't burn up the tires and the equipment early in a run. And I think when you have two drivers like Lusa and Leahy who continue to pressure each other, Lusa made the pass relatively easily. I don't think Leahy put up much of a fight. You see him, that number 24 is not letting Ryan Lusa get away by any means. So you have to wonder if they're pushing each other maybe a little bit more than they would be if that other driver wasn't there. If I'm Ryan Lusa and there is no Keegan Leahy, you're talking about a two-second advantage right there just coming out of the side of the screen. That's Michael Conti in third. It would be a completely different story if that other car wasn't there. So let's see how these two continue to push each other because those lap times aren't really dropping anywhere. They've now gone to 2.2 seconds ahead of the next closest car. And that next closest car is Zach Novak. Novak made that move on Michael Conti for position number three. And we saw that on ISM Raceway as well with Michael Conti. Very strong early in the run, very strong late in the run, but they struggled to find that mid-run speed. And right now, 14 laps into this race, falling back a little bit. Zach Novak has been strong. Talked to a couple of, of drivers in the field saying, who might be a driver to contend for this one? It might be Zach Novak. Obviously, Keegan Leahy is strong, and we see Ryan Luza up in front. But I think Zach Novak's going to have something for these guys before the end of this race. Well, the end of this race is coming closer lap by lap so far uncontested and green flag racing the opening 15 laps of 125. Obviously, it is not a make or break run early in this race. Plenty of green flag pit stops may lie in the horizon. You do see those groups of cars, still a couple of them, three and four groups fighting on the racetrack. Closest battle towards the front right now with Brad Davis and Cody Bias is for fifth position. And Bias in that number 13 machine on the inside had him cleared but wasn't able to get back to the gas quite like he wanted to. And Bias doing something a lot of guys haven't been able to tonight, and that is fight back up on the outside of the racetrack. The car you're on on board with now, Bias, now clearing the 13 at Avies after having almost lost that spot at the other end of the racetrack. We'll go at it again for round two. Davies to the bottom once more. This track looking really racy right now. They remain side by side through the center of the corner. A little bit of scrape of the wall, I think, up top by Cody Bias, but nothing too bad. And I think it's going to allow him to continue this fight as they head in towards three and four. Brad Davies going to get clear for a moment. I think Bias might just going to give it up and get himself back down in line after that scrape of the wall. Going to try to work the cut under. In fact, the 13 pushes a little bit through the center of the corner, but Bias nowhere near close enough to make something happen. They're now side by side, a couple of car lengths behind them. I believe for the 10th spot, I believe that's Bordeaux and Taylor Hurt. You see as they continue to fight just on the tail end of the top 10. As everybody tries to obviously find the strategy that works for them. It's by Mullis in the 27 down on the inside of the racetrack. You see Rattler just sticking right on that bumper. And it's Schoenberg who goes the wrong direction up top. He'll probably fall back to 14th position. It's exactly where he started. So inside again continuing to prove to be the place to be. But good news, 40 drivers took the green flag in this race. At the moment, all 40 of them are still scored on the lead lap with Luza leading the way. And just behind that battle with Schoenberg, Ray Alfala right now running mid-pack, former winner here at Auto Club. He's running in position number 16, trying to close in on Colton Davis in front of him and Brian Schoenberg, just two cars up. Another driver that's won here before that runs well in this series, tied for second in points, Nick Ottinger is back there as well, a couple positions behind in position number 19. So some drivers with maybe some some par qualifying runs didn't really hit their marks. They're starting to come towards the field, but Evan, not maybe as quickly as some of us would have thought as uh, Ray Alfala, Brian Schoenberg go side by side down to the three. Watch that fight as they duke it out for 16th and 17th position. Now foul up, but he outside. He gets a good run off, so turn four is not an impossible place to make a move. And now foul up. We'll get around Schoenberg as well. So now the 55 machine starting to struggle a little bit, but that's that. It's a tough complex, and it's a tough balance to strike if you did maybe not get the qualifying effort you wanted. We always tend to see this first green flag run at a race be that point where drivers try to balance themselves out. Cars who have a little bit more race pace pick up some spots. Drivers 
who maybe got a little bit of a better hot lap than what they can sustain over 125 will drop back just a little bit. But you can't do it all with just green flag action. I think that a big part of it is having enough green flag laps to be able to gain positions, make passes, and use that speed, specifically long run speed, in which you might find yourself and having an advantage over some other drivers. But then if you don't have any other yellows or any other opportunities to group back up, then you're not going to be able to obviously take advantage of the speed. You'll get five, six, seven spots, maybe if you're lucky, if you're really fast, somebody like a Logan Clampett, who's gone 13th to 5th. The problem is, once you've picked up all those positions, now you're five seconds off of the race lead, and that's where some yellows wouldn't hurt these drivers over the course of the run, although we got plenty of time to talk about that, with only 20 laps going to be complete this time of 125. Definitely not panic mode just yet for any of these guys that maybe didn't qualify well but have really, really good race pace like the likes of Logan Clamp. And yeah, you see that five-second deficit from yourself to the likes of Ryan Michael Luza, but the fact that you're able to keep that gap that small and yet still run your way through the field the way Logan has is actually quite extraordinary. And as he said, I mean, still a lot of racing left in this race. Still over 100 laps remaining. So if you're someone who's like Logan working your way through the field, Derek Bordeaux doing something similar, Jimmy Mullis, who's up plus five as well, no point getting over aggressive or over antsy just yet as Brad Davies, I think, takes that outside wall off of two and goes way down to the inside on the backstretch. He was way down below that yellow line, got a little bit sideways and caught the fence. He did a good job of hanging on to it, but he had to lose a lot of racetrack to do so. And impressively enough, I don't think he loses any position. Still behind Novak and still in front of Logan Clampett. He didn't smack the wall coming off of the corner. The car got a little bit loose and he tiptoed it up the hill just a little bit to hang on to it. That's when he got into that wall. Luckily for him, it was just after where that safer barrier falls away, so he got himself an extra maybe two feet to work with. You can see the next time into the corner, not shying away from things at all. These drivers very tight on exit early, and they will be all night long. Another pack there battling for position. Jimmy Mullis, Taylor Hurst coming through the field as well. Great to see the 74 car up in the top 10 early in this one. But one driver that I saw falling back through the field through that exchange, yes, we saw Brad Davies fall back, but Michael Conti has fallen off the pace. The five car outside the top 10 right now, and I believe back to about 16th or 17th place as he tries to track down Colton Davis. Uh, Ray Alfala made the move on him a couple laps ago, and uh, something amiss with that number five. We talked about mid-run speed a little bit earlier on. This is definitely the mid-run, and they're searching for speed. Posted in on what's going to be 100 laps to go, long way from home, and you continue to see battles on track, although I do think we've finally reached the point where a majority of these cars are spread out single file. You can really get a good look at them when they head down that back straightaway. The 27 Mullis continues to want to push buttons. He is one of our biggest movers. I mentioned Logan Clamp at up eight spots to fifth. Mullis a little bit tight that time off of the corner, but he is also with a pretty good gain up seven spots and fighting to break into the top 10, trying to get around the 20 with a Cody Bias in this fight for ninth spot. 27 cart, you're going to take a look on that 21 of Mullis down low as they roll through one and two. Also, the two of Ray Alfala looking up top, not quite close enough to make it three wide, but he's definitely trying to make himself something to think about for these two guys. They continue the fight off down towards this back straightaway, and they remain side by side. Ray's going to duck down to the inside and actually is going to make it three abreast, and the 21 decides to hit the eject button. Now it's going to be the 27 of Jimmy Mullis who has to deal with three times. And that 21 machine is putting the pressure on Alfala as well, but it's definitely the 27 Mullis on the top, Alfala on the inside, and Tobias has got a front row seat of this entire battle as the outside stronger that time off of the corner, but Alfala, somebody else who's been working his way through the field, started in 18th position. He took over 10th spot as of that last time around, and so this is a battle between Mullis and Alfala that they started next to each other. They run next to each other right now. have been following each other through the field, both into the top 10. And there's a driver with a little mid-run speed right now, that two of Alfala really pushing in this middle run, about 20 laps in, now 25 laps into this run, and he really is coming to life up off corner number four. Almost a little contact there with he and Mullis as they will drag race down the front. Uh, <laughs> Ray Alfala coming to life, uh, Dylan Duvall in front of him, trying to make a move on Bordeaux, and as Alfala gets that launch down into corner number one, takes a little look over that Simcraft number 42, as that would be the next victim for the VRS Ford if he can get up to Dylan Duvall. 
Duvall, somebody who has gone the wrong direction early in this race. And listen, there's a lot worse things you could be doing 26 laps into a run than be running inside of the top 10. But Duvall did lose a couple of spots early. Hasn't been able to get back up to Bordeaux. Bordeaux leapfrogged him a couple of laps ago, uh, about halfway through the run to this point, and just hasn't been able to get back on his bumper. Although Bordeaux made a mistake there, so this could have become a four-way battle pretty soon. You look out the front of Duvall's entry, he's going to catch Bordeaux just as Alfala and Mullis are catching him. Should be interesting in a four-way fight for 7th through 10th. Two machine of Alfala is going to look to the top side of Dylan Duvall. Is he going to be able to make something happen here as they come off court number two and head down this long back straightaway? Going to actually work the cutback here and get a little bit of that slip stream off the 04 of Derek Bordeaux. That's going to be enough to suck him up the inside of that 42 of Dylan Duvall. And he's nearly clear as they get to the center of the corner, but the 42 machine of Duvall, very good on the entry, but look at the drive off the corner that that VRS slipping a motorsports machine can get. He picks up a spot on that 42 of Dylan Duvall, and he likely smells blood in the water. And he's going to start hunting it down, that 04 of Derek Bordeaux, very quickly. I think he'll be around him here within the next couple laps. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, Fowler just continues to keep the pedal to the metal, but a little bit of a higher entry that time into the corner. You saw Duvall kind of close in on the left or quarter panel. Nothing's going to come from that. And now, Fowler goes back on the offensive. It's really the only last big group left inside of the top 10. It's his four-car group we've been following. He decides, though, to not go to the inside into the corner. Probably could have forced the issue and gone down low. Instead, now, Fowler keep it about a lane up off of the bottom of the racetrack. You could already see the rubber getting put down on this surface as you rode on board with the two through the quarter there. Now he'll make that move to the inside. The 4 is going to place his bets on the outside as Bordeaux tries to defend, but it seems like it is a lost cause and Real Valla continues the impressive start. Now 11 spots into the positive continues to pick up speed as this run goes on, but you rode on board with Ray Alfala and you saw those cars in front of him. There's three cars that are almost directly in front of him in Hurst, Clampett, and Davies, and then it's about two seconds up to Zach Novak, and then another second or so, or two seconds up to Keegan Leahy, and then another three quarters of a second to your leader. So Ray Alfala making these passes and making them look fairly easy as the run goes on, but he's got a little ways to run now to catch up uh, to Taylor, Hurst, Logan Clampett, and Brad Davies. Everybody up near the front of the field within the top five really has found themselves a place to race and really has a little bit of separation in between them. The first real battle on the racetrack besides Alfala and Bordeaux. Saw Rattler getting racy back there with Dylan Duvall in that 42, and there's one on your screen as well. A couple of side-by-side -side battles throughout this racetrack. You're definitely always going to have a couple of them here or there, and you see the 09 tucked in behind the 42. That's Duvall and Rattler, 10th and 11th on track at the moment. But we are definitely seeing significant separation from what we saw earlier. In fact, Lusa has stretched to seven tenths in front of Keegan Leahy in the battle for first and second. Still relatively close to the grand scheme of things, but we are seeing that separation as we get to what is soon going to be Randy, the closing bit to this run, 30 laps in, pick stops out of that far away. That's the main thing these guys are going to be thinking about, isn't it? And I have to think that we're starting to come close to the point where we might get some early birds coming down pit road, trying to work that little bit of the undercut. Your race leaders work down this back straightaway in towards three and four. Keegan Lee in that 24 was a little bit quicker than Ryan Michael Luza that last time through, and I'm curious if that's going to carry over as they head down towards this long curved front straightaway at Auto Club Speedway. Might be a situation where that 24 car of Keegan Lee has fantastic Late run pace, the number six machine of Luther goes to a 41.194. It's a 40.949 for Keegan Lee. He has found speed late in the run, Evan. Yeah, Leahy is wanting to put the pressure back on him. I was just watching out Fallows times as well because we've been talking about him coming through the field. He put down a 48.66 the last time by, which would be best enough uh, for the fastest lap last time. Logan Clampett, another driver with pretty good lap times in fifth position. He might be able to get to Brad Davies in front of him before this run is done. That is if the charge of Taylor Hurst and Ray Alfala don't get to him before that. Alfala has not slowed down. He's finally been able to get away from from Molas after they tag team the entire field. Alfala continues to close in. He could easily be fourth before we hit pit road. There's three drivers within a second of him. 
but he's going to get past those drivers first. Taylor Hurst in the 74 has shown some speed here so far this evening, and the two of Ray Alfano trying to find a way around, and in turn, the 74 trying to get up to Logan Clamp. A great run for the two that time at a corner number two. You see him go to the inside of the RTR websites, number 74 of Taylor Hurst, and they'll dance down the back straightaway, but Alfala, great run out of the corner to set up that pass, beautiful pass to move in to position number six. 74, Majita Hurst wants to fight back. In fact, he will get it out to the inside, but a very short-lived counteraction, and I think the smarter move, and we've seen a lot of drivers, Randy, but somebody gets up to him. In fact, we even saw it for the race lead when Luz had caught up to Leahy. Don't fight back. Don't really worry about ruining your equipment to get those extra bonus points. Just hang back there in P2. I mean, Leahy's still at a fantastic spot. Don't force the issue. You can see, though, on board with Logan Clavin. Here comes Ray Alfala to the inside of the racetrack, and side by side, we go for fifth. They're both red and black cars, but Alfala is on the inside. It's the 46 to clamp it up top, and there's another one. One in the back pocket, Ray Alfala knocking him off now into the top five. He's just making it look easy, isn't it? It feels like every time we look at this number two machine, every lap or two, he's passed the car so and he's in the process of passing another one. Next driver he'll be targeting will be the 13 of Brad Davies, who is well just a couple of tenths of a second out in front of him. And Ray is circulating on the racetrack about three tenths of a second quicker per lap as he works through corner number two here at Fontana down the back straightaway. And look at the drive off that, that number two Ford Fusion has down this long, long back straightaway. Goes that VRS machine and Brad Davies likely looking in that rear view mirror and really just trying to figure out how to let that two machine by without getting into the grit to the 40 seconds of Logan Clampett and the 74 of Taylor Hurst. Been about seven laps away this time by with 35 laps down. Seven laps away from getting to the one-third marker in this race. Obviously, if you can get to that on fuel, you could make it to the end of this race on a two-stop strategy. It would be at about lap 45 or so, and then closer to the end of this race at about lap number 90. That would be able to get you through to 125. Obviously, you could fluctuate a little bit, but you're going to need a little bit more than 40 laps of fuel out of every single run. And so far, no indication for the drivers up front that they are going to jump down to the pit lane quite yet. Typically, though, you might see a couple of drivers towards the back drop off. The only driver we've seen lose lead lap status is Kenny Humpy. That was not for scheduled service. He is four laps down in 40th position. But once somebody top five, maybe even top ten, makes that call, you're going to see a big influx of drivers headed down. This is nowhere near like what we saw at the beginning of the year at Daytona when drivers were coordinating pit stops. You can expect the radio to be very quiet until it all kicks off. And a couple of drivers making moves. Ray Alfala moved to position number three and uh, begins to pull away from Brad Davies and tries to uh, catch those drivers up in front or check that position number four, Novak, uh, in front of him. But it's about two seconds or so between himself and that 15. A lot of racing room in between Zach Novak and not only Ray Alfala, but also that battle for the lead up in front, which is about three tenths or four tenths of a second between those top two. So the top three seem like they have their speed down. They found a place to race. Ray Alfala had to get some of that track position to get up to position number four. But now that he is there, we'll see what he has throughout this race as uh, everybody else just uh, trying to find a place to race. A couple of pockets throughout the field. The guys going side by side and trying to pick up those spots before those pit stops happen. And you have to wonder, this deep into a run now, Randy, you think drivers are just trying to avoid confrontation a little bit? Obviously, Ray Alfala is not. I said there were three cars in front of him that he could have passed. He did pass all of them, and he did get up the P4. I do think that Novak a little bit too far out right now at two seconds away, but it looks like a lot of these drivers, again, not really wanting to go for the crossovers and force the two and three wide. They know that their tires have really fallen off. Even if you look at somebody like a Ryan Michael Lusa, who is leading this race, the best lap he put down was on fresh tires. It was a 30 Eight, five. He's down last time with a 41-1, so there is substantial fall off close to three seconds to this point. Yeah, it's pretty big right now. He had our first taker hit towards uh, pit road, the 05 machine of Nick Ottinger, so have to keep an eye on his lap times and where he cycles through, but still keep an eye on this two machine array all Fala. Whether or not he'll have time to make a move here on Zach Novak, I think it's still up in the air. He's circulating about four tenths of a second per lap quicker. And that number 15 machine, question is going to be is when does Zach Novak opt to come down uh, towards pit road because he should see that. Relay discretion is the better part of Valor as they work themselves across the time they want once again, don't think any of your race leaders are thinking about pit road just yet. The 21 of Cody Biases, though. Who's that? I see a Ford Fusion off towards the lane as well. 
As Derek Bordeaux in the Fusion came in from ninth position to get a pit right now at lap 40, would get you to about lap 80, which would get you to 120. Just shy, if you can squeeze one or two more laps out of this thing, then you should be good to go on the two-stop strategy, though a lot of the time, when you come down and you instantly get those fresh tires, you're talking about two to three seconds of difference per lap. If you stay out two more laps, you're going to be losing five seconds of time. So often, you don't get to dictate what your strategy is. You can try to keep it within your ballpark but oftentimes you have to react to what the drivers around you are doing nobody top five has decided that we're at that point yet and we're going to be shortly in a caution flying is out at lap 41 yeah the yellow flag flies for the first time and there is the three of Jarl Tien at the entrance of pit road we'll see if what happened and possibly it might have been him trying to come to pit road with a pack of drivers racing around him racing with Chris Overland, Chris Shearburn, Michael Conti on the outside he's coming through the pack and uh, Chris Overland and he have a little bit of contact little slide down there in corner number four but not able to save it and back up into the fence. It's very fortunate that that was not a four to five car accident. Tian had already pitted, had fresh tires. Look how much faster he is for the onboard shot. And just push it up was Overland. Tried to save it, tried to save it. That car spun around and about four drivers came within maybe five feet of that three as it was slotted across the racetrack. That could have easily been ugly. You go on board with Overland now. You can see him going up, going up. That's just the old tires. Can't hold her down. And somehow he avoids getting collected in that one and we end up with just a single car accident to bring out the first yellow at lap number 41 and now for the drivers who pitted and lost their lead lap status in return by a Sauten Jertian you're going to be stuck a lap down and the correct decision was to stay out because we'll have a cycle of yellow flying pit stops right at one third distance well, that 3 Tian has bigger issues just being down a lap right now, but everyone's definitely going to be coming down, except those drivers that are going to be taking the wave around with 100% certainty. But I'm still shocked the fact that that was only a single car incident, just where Jarl spun and the way cars were sort of spread out around them. He just sort of found the one little gap that wouldn't result in a lot of people getting involved in an incident. We got really, really lucky that that 3 machine is the only car we see get involved in major damage here today, as here comes the entire field down towards pit road for scheduled service. Obviously, the call is going to be four tires and fuel. We've seen it many times, though, this year. Phoenix, just two weeks ago, very good examples of drivers losing or retaining the lead on the pit lane. Everybody wants the same thing. I don't expect anything too outrageous, Tim, but you got to execute as loose as the first one in. Absolutely. you got to make sure that you hit your marks, get four tires. Luza has to back up from his box, so there's not hitting your marks, and he might lose a little bit of track position here as Leahy looks perfect so far in the 24, but we'll see if anybody gambles and comes out of pit road first as they drop the jack on the 24, and waiting, he is down and away, and I believe Zach Novak may have got him at the line. It was a drag race off of pit lane, but it was definitely not first in and out for Luz as he had those difficulties getting into the box to begin with. Keegan Leahy, on the other hand, your pole sitter, all the way down to the number one pit stall. He'll end up, I believe, second through all of this. It was Zach Novak who really pulled it out of the hat with a fantastic stop in the 15 machine. Went with the four tires. It was by far the fastest. That should put him to the number one spot think you're right in that 15 machine driven uh, by Zach Novak lockdown racing and to be very very happy with that they can come out in clean air here and a great pit stop as well from that two machine array Alfala got bad luck out at Phoenix mistake there on pit road cost and potential chance for a win he's not making the same mistake again as he comes off I believe second off the pit road he's gonna be a very happy camper for where he's gonna be starting and as we cross one-third distance and move into what's going to be another good run here from the Auto Club Speedway, this portion of tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Peak Antifreeze and Coolant. At Peak, we're not afraid to mix it up with the big boys. This is why we've been actively involved in motorsports for over 30 years. We identify with the straight shooters like John Force and Clint Boyer, just two of the truly great racers we've been a part of the Peak family throughout the years. Today, Peak still aims to shock the motorsports establishment, partly as a way to showcase the excellent 
excellence and competitive quality of our family of brands, but mostly because it's so much fun. You can look for our drivers and teams to challenge the heavy hitters in NASCAR, NHRA, and Dirt Late Model Racing. You can also find more information out at peakauto.com today. Proud title sponsor of the NASCAR PK and Freeze iRacing Series. So we will shuffle things up a little bit. Drivers looking for wave buys, basically all those who came down and pitted. Tian, Bias, and Duvall looking to get waved by the pace car. So will Kenny Humpy. So he'll neglect to come down pit road this time. He'll go from four laps down to three as he tries to overcome that incident uh, from earlier in this race that forced him down pit road for a bit. Yeah, he's going to need a couple of quick cautions to try to get back up there and get back on the lead lap. But Kenny Humpy, former winner here, former champion in this NASCAR Peak Antifreeze iRacing Series. So if anybody can rebound, got to be that guy in the 58 car. So we'll see how this, uh, this all plays out. The good thing for him is he still has some laps. We're working lap number 44 of 125. So still a little ways to go. But... The one thing that I'm interested in seeing, we saw Ray Alfala carve his way through traffic. He's going to sit in position number three when we go green. But how about Ryan Luza? Luza back there now in position number 10. Unlike the uh, initial start of the race where he started on the outside of the front row, he's now going to start in position number 10. So he's got a little ways to go to get back up towards the front of the field. That's what I talk about when we were discussing executed on pit lane. You would think just in conventional wisdom, Randy, that green flag pit stops are the more so do or die ones. If you make a mistake, obviously, I think there's more opportunities to bad entrance in, bad exit off. Of course, you could speed it. There's a couple of things as well. I think if you made a three-second mistake that would a green flag pit stop, you might have lost a spot or two just based on how spread out we were, but a three-second of a snake on yellow flag pit stops costs Ryan Luz uh, about eight positions and kicks him back to ninth as our scoring cycles through it updates once more. So he's going to have quite the charge back through the field. We'll have to watch that six machine and see how he's able to do on that. We'll also keep an eye uh, um, in front of him a little bit uh, to see just how our featured driver of this race does and what Logan Clampett can do on the restart as well. He also is going to have his work cut out for him. And it is going to be Zach Novak first time tonight for the number 15 machine in control of the field. And every time we have a restart, Start. The control car is in a much better position. Obviously has the opportunity to restart this race from when the base car heads down pit road to the time the green flag actually comes out on the exit of the restart box. So watch Novak and Leahy on the front row. Alfalo is going to be fun to watch on the inside of road two. And lose a half to recover from a mistake. Logan to clamp it as well back in 33rd. A couple of storylines as we head into the second run of this race. Pace car headed down only one yellow so far tonight from Fontana. And Zach Novak is antsy to get going. Green flag is back in the air. Oh, and there's some games happening in the mid-pack. You have the 55 of Schoenberg way up to the top of the racetrack. I think we had some people trying to jump in and cause a bit, a bit of an accordion effect. Let's see if we're going to have any problems through one and two here for the first time. Back to green flag racing, and everything's tied up and down the field. As you might expect, new tires. People are confident with the grip. Going to have to watch that five car of Michael Connie. You see Brad Davies, he's already fighting with the 74 of Taylor Hurst down this back straightaway. Keegan Lee involved in that fight as well. And Davies door the 24 machine to Leahy. Oh, coming up in the corner, man. another slide. It's Leahy up top. What a save on the outside of three and four. He's got no speed off for the quarter. You can see him sinking to the back on the top of the screen there with those yellow 24 numbers on the roof. He's way up top. He will go from top five to maybe top 20 if he is lucky all the way back as he finally stops the bleeding at about 16th position. But that car probably should have been wrecked. And we'll take a second look at a race spot TV replay as he dropped all those spots on the front straightaway. Yeah, he's all the way back there where Shearburn, Conti, and Fayash are battling. Looks like he's found his footing, as you mentioned, but now he's going to pass Nolan Scott and a bunch of these other cars. And oh, by the way, this is pretty much where the Hornet's Nest begins. A lot of these drivers fighting to, to get back into the top 10, pick up some positions on this restart. So he's definitely got some work to do. Up in front, Novak has gapped this battle for second by about seven tenths of a second. Taylor Hurst on the back bumper, the two of Alfala. And Brad Davies, there's another car that should have been wrecked off turn two. He had that thing pointed towards the infield. Great save by Davies a couple laps ago. But now he's battling up here in the top five. And where did Blake Reynolds come from? 
Blake Reynolds, somebody else who has made a big splash in this race, up 10 spots and has worked his way into the top five with the absence of a couple of drivers who have made mistakes in the last 10 laps around it. He's side by side right now with Davies. I think the 13 might have a little bit of an upper hand in this battle. It's a side by side fight for fifth and fourth and also Alfala and Hurst battling, but the number two of Alfala will get it to the runner-up spot for the first time tonight. The 74 doesn't want to roll over, though. We are seeing that little bit of tenacity, Randy, that was lacking towards the end of the first run. Somebody passes you. You were a little bit neglected to try to go right back at them. Just take the spot and tuck in line. Taylor Hurst will finally do that. But he really gave Ray Fala a run for his money. And by the time the two finally gets on through, Zach Novak has nine tenths in front of him. I don't think it's that anyone wasn't fighting with that two machine of Alfala. It's just that their best wasn't good enough, just with as quick as he was towards the end of that run. This time, everyone on it, nice, good, clean uh, tires. Because of that, they're going to be pushing it through here. It's still a big hornet's nest in the mid-pack, starting to uh, uh, settle itself out, as you would expect. The 74 still fighting with that two machine of Alfala, but Ray has felt really comfortable up in that second groove. He made up a lot of his positions up there, and he seems confident out there on the new tires as well. The white and yellow number six to lose on the inside. He is doing his best to make up for the mistake on a pit road as he came in under caution flying conditions, overshot the box, had to back it up. It didn't cost him that much time on the stopwatch, but it cost him eight spots on track. He is now back into P5 after leading down to the pit lane when all of this started, and he wants another one to the inside at Avies. He's going to go to the inside of the 13 and try to pick up that position. But now he's got Taylor Hurst side by side with Ray Alfala in front of him. Alfala on that second group looks like he's going to take that position off the corner. Hurst trying to find a way around and poking his nose out of line just behind that battle. Brian Schoenberg battling with Blake Reynolds, trying to pick up some speed and trying to pick up the position. A lot of early run speed out of that 55 as there goes Hurst once again looking to the inside of Ray Alfala trying to take second place away and oh by the way is a battle side by side. Zach Novak is pulling away. Exactly what Novak wants to see. The 15 is uncontested up front and even though Taylor Hurst hasn't been able to get back side by side again, there's another dive as he goes to the inside of Alfala. Lewis had tried to go to the inside of him at the same time. That one was a close call. And now leaning on each other off of the turn as Alfala again holds off Hurst. But Hurst does not need to get up there and stay side by side with Alfala for this to hurt a Randy every single time. They're just even fighting. Even if the 74 is just being a little bit pesky at this point, it has distracted Alfala from turning it up front. This might hurt the 74 a Hurst though because that move to the inside has opened up the top and it looks like Luza is going to be able to get third away from him on the outside and he does as he slides down now by the stripe so it's now Novak 1, Alfala 2, Luza into third as Hurst slides back into fourth but this is far from over. Second position right now through ninth all separated by only eight tenths of a second. It's a big single file train at the moment at a turn two. The train's roaring its way down this back straightaway. It loses it, taking a little bit of a peek on the inside of Ray Alfala, but not going to be able to make anything of it just yet. Three corners, number three and four. The 74, Taylor Hurst, he still wants to make something happen. He's running the bottom where everyone else has sort of moved up about half a lane, but instead it's going to be the six machine of Luza. We can say good run off towards this front straightaway. Going to pull alongside with Ray Alfala. No one's been able to really make the inside move work on Ray just yet. Maybe the defending series champion can make it work through one and two, and he's indeed going to get clear of Ray Alfala as they come off corner number two. Maybe that mistake sparked a little bit of something inside of Ryan Luza. He was still fast towards the end of that first run, but Alfala was the fastest of all the cars, and all of a sudden Luza making things look easy, like it's 2017 charging through the field, and he has stopped Ray Alfala's march to the front short, as this is the first time tonight under green flag racing conditions, Alfala has really lost the battle, and that number six of Luza stretches it to two car lengths, and he sets his eyes on trying to get back up front. Zach Novak has been able to kick his feet up since this restart. Found himself in the top spot. I'm not going to say he kind of walked into it. He had a very good pit stop. Was able to pick up the spots on pit road. Took over the race lead. Has yet to look back at lap 30. Or rather, at lap 55, sorry. As we continue to work into the middle portion of this race and close to halfway home. And he's shown consistent speed throughout the first run as well. So no surprise that Novak 
is running up front, but now that Ryan Luza has clean air, we'll see if he can reel in the 15 of Novak. Man, Taylor Hurst keeps trying to get to the inside of Ray Alfala. He can set up the pass in the 74, just can't get that run off that Ray Alfala can get, and it seems like Alfala is so good off turn two that whatever Hurst can do to try to get to the inside here down into corner number one, Alfala drives away with it down the back straightaway. Great little battle, though, for position number three as they continue on. Schoenberg in fifth, and Look who's made his way up towards the top five. Jimmy Mullis in the number 27 is on the back door of Schoenberg. And Schoenberg's having a great run tonight as well. He's moved from 14th to 5th. Mullis 17th to 6th. And with all of these drivers going into the positives, somebody's going to have to have problems. And it was really biased in Duvall through a lot of the pit stop stuff. Duvall's gone 6th to 34th. But Duvall has fallen 4th to 36th. That has allowed these drivers to take up spots in the top 10. This one with Novak and Luza back to one two. Hurst is still tried, by the way. You can see him looking to the inside of that red number two of Alfala again, continuing to try to get something going on the inside. He's about 0 for 11 on attempts so far, but you got to tip your cap to the 74 machine and not just roll it over and give it this one up. I guess he figures the best way to stay in fourth is to continue to be on the attack, and he stays a good bit in front of Schoenberg. Not an immediate threat right now as the 55. Yeah, it's showing birds a little bit too far back to really be a worry for Taylor Hurst, but at the same time, you don't want to push yourself too hard trying to fight with Ray Alfala and maybe use up your stuff. Ray has been able to stretch that gap out just enough that Taylor can't quite get it there. And like Evan just said, he's something like 0 for 11, but only got to hit that one home run to potentially pick your up, yourself up that third spot. But as we're approaching half distance, I'm not sure if I'm that number 74 car, if I want to get too over anxious about fighting over third place when you have the likes of Schoenberg and a big gaggle of cars behind. I'd rather settle in behind this two car and save the tires a little bit and get uh, dragged back to those guys kicking and screaming and suddenly have a hornet's nest of fast cars to have to deal with as caution flies. You have a hornet's nest and a race starting you up because a caution flag is out and it's in the same spot of the racetrack. Adam Gilliland this time, the number eight machine. Heavy front and rear end damage. Just look at this one on the replay. We saw Overland get really tight. He's the one that really initiated the contact in that first one. And this time it was Adam Gilliland who just kept pushing up and up the hill. And at 29, nearly didn't do him many favors. Bitgrass was right on his door. But you'll see it right here. The eighth pushing up, pushing up, pushing up. And the 29 machine right there. And there's the contact that finally hooks him into the outside wall. It was a big hit for Adam Gilliland. He came down in front of a big pack of cars and somehow, again, we don't have a parking lot. It remains a one-car incident. Yeah, but a tough break for Adam Gilliland nonetheless. And I'm sure he'll rebound in a couple of weeks' time at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. He likes that racetrack out there, and I'm sure he'll be ready to roll the dice. And speaking about rolling the dice, we'll come by this time and see who decides to elect to come down Pitt Road. And monkey see, monkey do, by the looks of it, Zach Novak leads. And everybody else for the most part coming down behind him. I don't see anybody within the top 15 or top 20 uh, taking that gamble per se to stay out on the racetrack. This will definitely shake things up because that first yellow came right when everybody was going to pit anyways. Now this shakes up the strategy because you're not going to be able to at least make it to the end of this race at lap 60 to 125 with the fuel that you're about to get on board. So it still would be a one-stop race at this point on. Let's see if Zach Novak, though, could make a little bit more a pit road magic. He will go with right side tires first. Obviously going to top it off with race fuel, but does he go for the four-tire call for the 15 machine? Looks like he will. So he wants the work. He came into pit road third last time off first. He's going to have a run for his money, and he is not going to get it again. How about Jimmy Mullis and Ryan Luza, who had the bad stop last time, comes in and puts it on a dime. Third in, first out, Luza, the big winner on that one. Great stop from that number six car to get himself out to the race lead. And great one from Jimmy Mullis as well to get himself out into second. Then you have the likes of, of course, Novak, Taylor Hurst, and Ray Alfala falls back to fifth, Blake Reynolds in sixth, and a couple other drivers I think we may have seen drop out of the top five as well. Always something that you expect to see, but I think relatively everybody was in agreement on what the call was going to be with Luza and uh, Mullis jumping in front of Novak. Hurst and Alfala through the top five. 
with Reynolds, Schoenberg, Davies, Rattler, and Davis to what would be your top 10. Something else I think is interesting. Nobody is tucked up behind the pace car looking for a wave by. Gilliland, who was involved in the accident, is not currently on the racetrack. And Kenny Humpy was able to get one additional lap back by staying out. He's only two laps down now, so continuing to work his way into the picture. Yeah, with Ryan Loser going back to the front of the field, we'll see what he can do in clean air. That was the issue on that last restart where he had to come up from 10th and took him a little time through the traffic. Not as bad as, as one would possibly think with the competition that's up in front. But now with clean air, we'll see if Ryan Luza can possibly check out and try to make some ground and, and put some time between himself, uh, Jimmy Mullins, Zach Novak, and the rest of this field in this restart. Driver we've been following tonight, Logan Clamp, it's just a high school senior. It's a little bit of a step above that, but obviously the youth movement is also very prevalent in the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series. And we'll take a quick opportunity as we work under yellow to step aside and get a word from them. Things can get rough out there. You think you got the brass? I proved it last season. That was last year. Now we've got young blood ready to take out the old. Start your engines. It's time to race. Welcome back live to Race Bond TV's coverage of the 2018 NASCAR Pecana Freeze iRacing Series from Fontana, California's Auto Club Speedway. Third race of the 2018 campaign. We're happy that you're with us at Race Spot TV and iRacing Live. Evan Pasoko, Tim Terry, Randy Cheneth upstairs with you as we close in on the halfway point in tonight's Fontana 125, currently working lap 62. So in fact, when we come around the next time, we will be halfway home. Most of the passes for the race lead tonight have come from pit lane. Ryan Luza lost it last time, but he got it back this time. The number six forward is gonna be back in front of the field for the next restart due up. Jim Pullis in the second and previous race leader, Zach Novak is gonna be third, Tim. So interesting to see how that continues to play a factor in tonight's race. Of course, the time into this yellow still puts us a pit stop away from getting to the end of this race as we take the green flag and begin to count down now towards the end. Interested to see what Mullis can do on the outside. Was creeping his way towards the front of the field before that caution flag flew. Keep an eye on Keegan Leahy. He is back up to position number 11. He fell like a stone on the last restart. Got up to that high groove. There's comers and goers through this race. And as we reach that halfway point of the event, I'm sure we're going to see it, especially here in the second half. Uh, guys like Ray Alfala had to move his way up. Uh, Brian Schoenberg's in the top 10. Brad Davies, David Rattler. A lot of familiar names. We'll see how they shake out. This car going to drop down when it was Zach Novak at the helm. He took off right away on the restart. We'll see what strategy the number six Orion loses it implements. He has not led us to a restart so far tonight as the second caution on the afternoon is going to go behind us. The six car holds off a little bit longer but puts the right foot down and we are halfway home from Fontana. Green flag is back in the air. Top two will single file out. The battle will be for third between Novak and Hurst to turn one. Down in towards one and two of the first time. They're fanning out three wide for six. The two machine of Alfalo tries to hook up the top of 74 of Taylor Hurst trying to pick up a spot on Zach Novak as well. As they work themselves down this back straightaway for the 63rd time out of 125. But it's Ryan Michael Luza who's going to lead him in towards three and four. Leading that group, it's Alfala and the two machine stormed his way into the top five, really, but hasn't been able to get that little bit of extra sense get in here. He is the third wheel of the group right now with the 15 to machine at Ovac in front. Hurst still in the middle, but a battle for the race lead may have been on there. You saw the block thrown as the 27 of Mullis went low on the six. Loser shut the door once, but he can't do it twice. Trying again now, and he will. He'll drive it in hard and cut the bottom off. Mullis left with no opportunity besides the apron. Rolls out of it a little bit, stays P2. Yeah, Mullis showed a lot of speed down into corners number three and four. Ryan Luza looked a wee bit better in that end than one and two. We'll see what Mullis can do to try to get back up to Ryan Luza as they work through corners number three and four. Novak trying to close in 
on this battle. Her single file, as is Ray Alfalo and Blake Reynolds. But that battle for lead uh, looks like it's subsided for the time being. Ryan Luza looks like he's turned the wick up. Luza, I think, maybe got kicked into gear a little bit by that mistake he made on pit road again. When it all happened, he was down in front and leading this race. He was in a fantastic position. I don't think there's any point tonight that he hasn't looked like the fastest car. I just think because he was leading, and Ray Alfalo started way back in 18. Now, Val is making all these passes, just made the two look quicker. I think those two cars were pretty even, but at this point, Al Fala again struggling in traffic as he might now get passed up by the 13 to Brad Davies to the inside. Ray's trying to make something happen, though, still on that upper groove. That's going to be the big thing, is I think those six, that six of the two, they definitely look like the quickest cars, but like you're saying, Evan, we've yet to see them really get hooked up and be able to fight here as they work themselves through corners number one and two once again. Whenever one of them was out in front, the other was currently working their way through the field. So over the next 60 or so laps, will we get the opportunity to see them hook up? I hope so. If that continues to be a trend, you can see how thick things are towards the back of the pack still as everybody tries to fight for a spot and law and off of this restart. Closest battle up front now with the 55. Brian Schoenberg is just a step in front of that 13 to machine battle. You were taking a look at with Brad Davies. Schoenberg will complete the pass on Zach Novak. So the 15 machine will not be out in the clean air on this restart. Not looking as fast as he did the last time when he rocketed out to that second advantage. Yeah, Zach Novak, the last time by, got a horrendous entrance into corner number three. A little bit wider than I think he really wanted to go. That opened the door for Schoenberg and opened the door for Taylor Hurst. But Hurst couldn't get through. Schoenberg did. Hurst goes back to work on Novak and Schoenberg. A lot of short run speed in the Heyman hustle, number 55. He hustles that car to the inside of the racing Virginia, number 27 of Jimmy Mullis. Battle for position number two heating up. And keep in mind here, Evan, Brian Schoenberg, this is his home track. He's never finished inside the top 20 in end pass competition at this racetrack. Brian Schoenberg trying to put that behind him. Drivers were messing with him earlier than I'd ask it if he was going to get another 21st position to finish here tonight. Did have an incident back in the pack there. You saw the end of it. It was the 05 of Nick Ottinger. You'll take a second look now on a race spot TV replay. He's on the inside of the racetrack right here, and he tries to step up the hill a little bit, trying to side draft maybe with Dylan Duvall, and right there tags him. Duvall somehow does not wreck. It was the 05 who got the worst of it. Did a pretty good job of limiting the contact, but he still got into the inside wall and had to go, as you see on a little bit of an off-road excursion. Dick Ottinger is still on track. He does fall, though, to 38th position. That would put him last on the lead lap, and he has a pretty substantial amount of damage. Again, as always, could be worse with that incident involving two cars, no yellow, as we stay green. This, I think, pretty much going to end the 05 machine tonight. I think we'll be able to get back out there, but less than 60 laps remaining in this race and the damage he has. It's going to be quite a while. He's down on pit road. And he will not have a lot of time to potentially get back up and pick positions after getting repaired. That said, Ryan Michael Luza still leads this thing with Brian Schoenberg in the second spot. Jimmy Mullis third, Novak fourth, and Taylor Hurst rounds out your top five as they work themselves down the front straightaway once again. And for the most part, your top 10, I think top 15, have all gotten themselves single file. First side by side with the 24, Keegan Lee. He has been no stranger to that tonight. He's in the middle of a thick pack right now. And again, everybody just trying to get through these first 15 to 20 laps of the run. If you can get to that point, again, you're never going to be completely away from somebody. But just look how tight that single file line is all the way snaking off of the quarter. I don't think anybody besides your race leader, first to second, and let's not count Nick Ottinger in 38th who had the incident. The biggest gap between two positions in the field is between first and second at a half a second and that's not a lot so you can see on that wide shot just how tight everybody is in the center as Davies tries to hold off Keegan Leahy you look at Keegan Leahy you look at Ray Alpala you look at Michael Conti there's three drivers that have had some very interesting nights so far as we just entered the second half of this race Conti was up front fell back now working back towards the front Alpala started mid-pack worked up towards the front is falling back a little bit as to the inside of Davies and then Keegan Leahy started up front went to the back of the pack on that second run and now is working back towards the front so it, it's it's only been 71 laps so far in this one but we've had some drivers with some interesting stories throughout this race so far and we've still got laps to work here as Davies tries to tuck in tight underneath Ray Alpala trying to make that move back 
And you can see a fight for second now as well. Going on just a little bit in front of the battle with Brad Davies once more. It's the 55 of Schoenberg on the defensive. Jimmy Mullis, nice and quick on the inside. Dove down, took the lane away. And he's already got two car lengths by the time he comes up off of the corner. Nice move to move back into the number two position. He's still, again, obviously closely guarded. Schoenberg right there looking to the inside. And Hurst Novak not all that far back either. The 55, but in fact, going to lose a little bit of time on the attempted look to the inside. Side, that might hurt him here with Hurst off of the corner. How many times have we seen this tonight? The 74 looking up the inside of somebody here and towards these corners of number one and two. And he's going to try it on Brian Schoenberg this time. He wasn't able to make it work on the two of Ray Alfala, but through corners number one, I think that 74 is going to get him clear. So move Taylor Hurst up a spot. Move Brian Schoenberg at minus one as they head down the back straight. Three car group now trying to keep up but with Mullis who's out in front but it's all Ryan by Galusa. We cross the halfway point off for the race start but now that things are a little bit less hectic as we've worked a couple of laps into this run. Let's take this opportunity to take a look at tonight's uh, midway race break brought to you by iRacing. The leading online racing simulation developed from the beginning as a centralized racing and competition service. iRacing organizes, hosts and officiates races on the virtual tracks all around the globe and in the fast-paced world of esports i racing is a one-stop shop for online racing with officially sanctioned series by the likes of nascar and many more and lap number 74 it is ryan michael Luza leading this race best car on track Seven seconds in front of Jimmy Mullins, who runs in the number two position. Taylor Hurst is third. Brian Schoenberg runs in fourth with Zach Novak right where he started in the number five position. Bolster Keegan Leahy down to P6 as they run right now with Ray Alfala up a few in seventh. Brad Davies runs in eighth spot. Blake Reynolds is ninth. And Michael Conti rounds out your top ten. And Michael Conti just lost that spot to Derek Bordeaux in a very entertaining battle back here between himself and Colton Davis. You see it on your screen. Christian Chalner, a part of this battle as well, scored last time by in 13th, but he's almost trying to make it three wide there for that spot. Logan Clampett, Marcus Richardson, a part of that battle as well. The Chaos crew starting to make their way towards the front. Casey Kerwin in 16th, Matt Busa in 17th, Nolan Scott in 18th. Corey Vincent and Ryan Lowe complete your top 20. And further down the field here, Brandon Pitgrass runs 21st with David Rattler 22nd, Timmy Hill 23rd, Cody Bias, Michael Guest run out your top 25 with Joe Letterello, Casey Tucker, Bobby Zielinski, Chris Shearburn, and Nick Shelton rounding out your top 30. And continuing on through 31st position is uh, Philip Diaz, 32nd for Chris Overland, 33rd, Dylan Duvall, Jake Sturgis is 34th, and Andrew Fayash, the third, has fallen to 35th position. Jarl Tien uh, continuing on through, you got Alex Bergeron, 36th, then Jarl Tien, 37th, Nagonger, 38th, Kenny Uppy, 39th, and all the way at the back, Adam Gilliland in 40th round out your 40 car field. Humpy is still on track, two laps down in 39th, but Adam Gilliland is 17 laps down in 40th. That car is still not returned to the racetrack after being involved in the accident, and it looks like his night may be done. That's been a look at your iRacing midway race break. For more information on the wide variety of sim racing possibilities online, you can visit iRacing.com to sign up today, and all new iRacing memberships are 40% off, and they contain all the basic content you need to start your iRacing career today. So if you want more information on that specifically, go to iRacing.com forward slash membership. We saw some entertaining battles throughout that field when we had the midway race break, but this battle right here that's on your screen, the 74 of Taylor Hurst continues to work the inside of Jimmy Mullis, and we've seen this play out multiple times this evening. The 74 will set a pass up, go to the inside, but just doesn't have that drive off. We saw Ray Alfala earlier when he showed all that speed in that first run, really get those runs off of corner number two. That's what Taylor Hurst right now is lacking. Sets it up down to the inside of Jimmy Mullis, but just can't seem to do anything with it off the corner. But right now, position number three, still a little ways to run in this race. And you see that field behind, a lot of single file racing. Looks like Bordeaux uh, to the inside, battling with Brian Schoenberg. Blake Reynolds back here as well. But for the most part, toward the top 20 or so, everybody's single file and picking off those quick passes. And Schoenberg up on the outside of the racetrack again. This portion of tonight's broadcast brought to you by Herculaner Bedlaners. The tough comes easy and 
feel like every time I check in with that 55 of Schoenberg, he's going the wrong direction on the outside of the racetrack. He has had overall a very good night, is still in the green, but it seems like when he gets stuck up on the outside of the racetrack, he doesn't just lose one. It's going to be a group of two or three cars that pounce on him, but that's the case right there. Davies, Bordeaux, and now Reynolds all get to him in sequence. Some people have liked running that upper groove like we've seen with the Tula Ball follow, but it seems that this racetrack that's sort of rubbered in has really taken a liking to the bottom line. The 13 of Brad Davies, he's currently running the top with Derek Bordeaux right now, but I think Bordeaux has a slight advantage. That said, Davies, good run off of corner number four towards this front straightaway. That's, I think, going to put him just out in front for now, but as they run towards three and four, what can Bordeaux maybe make happen? They're both going to run. Actually, no, they're going to kind of swap. 13 going to go to the bottom. The 04 runs the middle on entry, and then he gets a very, very late apex. Tracks out out to the wall. And can that 04 machine get a run on Brad? If he can, he looks to the inside, and here we go, side by side, the fight for seventh. Bordeaux on the inside of Davies. On board with Davies, he took a very wide arc in. Bordeaux trying to keep that car low, and he does make that pass for position. So Bordeaux going to pick up another spot as he slowly starts to pick away at the field. Brad Davies struggles in the later ends of these runs. It, it is interesting to describe somebody who's run at an eighth and now ninth position as struggling, but I think Davies has got a little bit more in him. He just needs to put a couple of good laps together. We'll see if something comes from that. A fight for second now is on. That's Taylor Hurst, number 74 car in front of Jimmy Mullis. Just passed him that time, but a turn two. We'll see if Mullis has anything to come back at him, but Taylor Hurst might be second for the first time tonight. It took him about two laps to set up the pass, make the pass, and clear Jimmy Mullis. But now that he's got that position, we'll see if he can try to reel in Ryan Luza in front of him. He's got some clean air, and now Mullis about a length or so back from that number 74. He's a ride on board with Jimmy Mullis in the Racing Virginia number 27 down into the corner behind them. Oh, here comes Keegan Leahy. Leahy to the inside of Novak to pick up one spot and move himself a little bit closer towards the front of the field, currently now in position number four, but there's that BRS Chevrolet closing in and trying to make something happen here. We haven't talked about Keegan Leahy a whole lot here in the middle stages of this race, but now that he's rebounded from the uh, way to the back of the field, he might be a contender before this thing's all said and done. It's kind of amazing how somebody can just float around the top 10 and be relatively quiet while doing so. The driver who came into tonight as the leader in the championship standings through two races with 82 total points obviously took the win two weeks ago for the ISM Raceway in Phoenix, Arizona. Started tonight from pole position and is trying to again just get that little bit extra. He, Ray Alfala, some other names have been able to show fast cars. Obviously a different story with Alfala moving through the pack and Leahy started up front but you have drivers with speed no doubt but they don't have number one speed they can get up to second they can get third fourth and fifth but everybody looking for that little bit more it seems like those key passes have been coming in the strategy department tonight from pit road as a move to the inside here comes Leahy trying to get around Mullis side by side we go for third 24 machine looks down to the bottom on that 27 car and I think he's gonna have this done relatively quickly move Keegan Lee up into that third spot and now he's going to start trying to reel in that 74 but Jimmy Mullis isn't done yet going to work the cut back here but not quite able to maintain the overlap so Keegan is safe for the moment will that moment last all the way through three and four yes it will they're going to be single file as they roll through this part of the racetrack as well so pull sitter, Ke pull sitter Keegan Lee slowly moving his way forward now setting his sights on Taylor Hurst and that 74 just out in front of him you can see Taylor Hurst, the first car on your screen there. There's a reason you don't see Lusa because he is two seconds in front of him. There he is, way off into turn number one. You see the yellow bumper of the number six entry way out in front. That's the gap. That's what two seconds looks like between Lusa and Hurst. So again, obviously you want to get every single spot you can. If you can get up the Hurst and get the job done, that's great. Although I don't know if Mullis is going to let Leahy just walk all over him. He was peeking down low that time at a two, but it is a big difference from getting to second second and getting to the race lead tonight and we've seen that consistently over the course of the now almost 85 completed laps tonight for the virtual auto club speedway is the leader at any given point seems to be way out in front of the rest of the pack we talked about long run speed yes keegan Leahy is pushing his way towards the front but how about that big red machine behind ray alfala in car number two Passak Novak and now working up on Jimmy Mullis for what is position number four. 
Leahy now pulling away a little bit from the 27 and trying to close in on Taylor Hurst. Nice little four-car battle. Alfala sets it up at a corner number two, works to the inside of the 27. Question is, can he make it work on the inside? Through corners number three and four, he'll pull to the door in the middle of three and four. The 27 is going to have to make the outside work in turn four. We've seen it tonight. They got really tight that time off of the quarter. You can see Alfala using the flat of the racetrack down there below the white line. You get a little bit loose making that transition back up to the banked part of the racetrack in the front straightaway. But it got Alfala about a half a car length. And it's going to be the difference maker in clearing the 27 machine into the quarter. So Alfala will get that spot. Alfala to fourth. Mola stays in fifth. But again, you see on the left hand side of your screen, that's Keegan Leahy. Not all that far back off of Hurst. Alfala Mullis, not all that far in front of Zach Novak. This five car pack still very much up in the air as we are now inside of our fuel window to get to the end of this race. Less than 40 laps to go. A pit stop at any point now would allow you to go to the end. Of course, yellows and all of that is a major factor in when you're going to pull the trigger. That's the main thing we're thinking of is the fact that, well, at our last caution, we were looking at 60 laps to make it to the end, which gives you a couple options. You can either do a long 40 lap run at some point, then a short 20 lapper, or you can split the difference at about 30 and 30. And it's going to be interesting to see what these guys actually choose to do as we're closing in on that 30 lap count in this green flag run. Two Machine Array Alfala continues to work his way, gaining momentum on the 24 of Keegan Lee. Let's see if anyone wants to jump down uh, towards pit road just yet. Maybe as an early taker, none of your race leaders surely are going to go for that choice. Maybe a couple people in the back know, but every time they come off of corner number four, Evan, we need to be looking more and more at that pit entry line because surely someone's going to uh, blink sooner rather than later. The question is, who is it going to take to pit to convince their other cars to come down as well? We had this conversation, Tim, when we saw the first little bit of green flag just barely get started before the yellow kind of cut that down after only four cars came down to the pit lane. But if somebody like a Brad Davies were to pit for eighth position, I'm not sure that would draw the likes of Leahy and Alfala down pit road or, you know, your race leaders and such. But we did talk about the obvious big difference in the tires. You come down pit road, you're going to be a lot quicker rate right when you come off. So who is it going to take? to make the big swing. Well, how about Keegan Leahy down pit road? We'll see if that's going to be enough to convince other drivers to come down pit road. Are they going to react to that? He'll be down fresh tires. He'll be a little bit over two seconds per lap faster, but he gets back out on track. Is that going to be enough to draw Luza down or is somebody like him 2.3 seconds in front of the rest of the field in a good enough spot that he doesn't really care what somebody else is doing? Do they react or do they not? We'll find out. I think it's definitely going to get their head scratching as Keegan Leahy comes down, gets his service on pit road. Luza is going to stay out on the racetrack for one more lap. But these guys last came down pit road at, what, lap 60-ish as we get one more taker down onto pit road. That's Zach Novak going to peel off the racetrack and onto pit road. So uh, if they go from lap 60 to about lap 90, that's 30 laps. And then they got about 35 to the end. So they're splitting up this run a little bit as you see a couple near the middle portion of the field come down pit road and get service to their race car. So I think this is a smart move by these drivers to, to really come down now and, and split up this run in two. But then again, we're up here and we're not on the pit boxes. That's why they've got the crew chiefs obviously helping them out again. A lot of these teams have other people in the sim with them, uh, helping them out on strategy. Of course, the iRacing services offer you an automatic spotter, let you know cars higher, cars low. But at this level of sim racing, you have a completely dedicated team to crunching these numbers. But a couple of drivers want to come down. There's a 74 of Taylor Hurst in from second, and he's going to draw a crowd. A lot more drivers in. Derek Bordeaux, one of the drivers down pit road. Brad Davies is in as well. So here comes a big influx of fast cars. Richardson, Kerwin, Rattler, and Scott all down pit road. Loser still all on his lonesome out outside. Obviously, everybody coming down needs enough fuel to get to the end. At this point, it's basically an entire fill-up to be able to reach the end distance lap 125. But with the second place car pitting, Luza's got no choice. And here comes your race leader at lap number 92. Conservative entry, milking that two-second gap, not wanting to make a mistake. A number of drivers opting to continue to stay out. Ray Alfala, he stays out there on the racetrack. Jimmy Mullis in the 27. He sticks it out there. Logan Clampett in the 46. He's going to stay out as well. Brandon Pickgrass. So a handful of relevant names keep the way out front and maintain the track position. I can't say I blame him because the trend this year, Evan, has been when you pit early, a caution flies. And the other thing to keep in mind is that for these guys who haven't pit, let, pit yet, 
I don't think you can come down within the next couple of laps and be in a good position. I think at this point you need to stay out for another seven, eight, nine, maybe even ten laps in order to undertake the tire disadvantage you just gave yourself, but three times gonna disagree with me. Alfala comes to pit road, Mullis stays out. And obviously the concern with pitting early into those company cars that short pitted is you're going to lose a lap when you pit. That's what we saw. Four drivers get stuck a lap down. We had that first yellow come out about at this point nearly 50 or so laps ago around lap 40. That's the concern with a lot of drivers that tends to push them away from the short pit call. There's also a group of drivers who are really going to want to stretch this thing out. We're not pitting because we're running out of fuel. We're not far from there, but we're pitting now because we're about halfway through the last time we took a restart, split the remaining lap in half, get to the end of this and we're inside of the fuel window. Now you're going to have a select group of drivers who just want to stay out, stretch it as far as they can. You'll see Jimmy Mullis come down pit road, but I'm more so looking at the Reynoldses and the Lowe's and the Overlands, the drivers who have been a bit packed. They might try to stay out a little bit longer, see how far they can go, and maybe hope a yellow can fall in their favor that will shake things up. Because if not, if you want to take the 19th place finish, more power to you, but some of these drivers think that taking a little bit of a gamble might be worth it. Even if it's just five extra laps or so, just see if maybe something goes your way. Yeah, if a caution flag comes out or the sword, and, and I agree with you, but Ryan Lowe, Chris Overland apparently aren't on that strategy because they came down pit road to get service to their race cars, and Ryan Lowe almost had a moment coming down into pit road, but saved it, got it down to pit speed. It looks pretty good right now. Nick Shelton is one of those drivers that has stayed out on the racetrack. Chris Shearburn is one of those that has stayed out on the racetrack, and they'll continue to stay out on the racetrack this time, but uh, Chris Overland and Ryan Lowe, when they were on the racetrack with those old tires, they were being passed left, right, and center by those drivers on new tires. Not as bad right now for Shearburn or Shelton, but Shelton will have the uh, O2 car come up right behind him on fresh rubber, and, and then just behind, there's a couple more that are looking uh, to try to get up here and, and make the move with those fresh tires. So watch Shelton, watch Shearburn uh, running in second and third, but Blake Reynolds was running within the top five uh, before that, or top ten, so maybe a little bit of a different strategy trying to win this thing. We definitely have that contingency staying out. Luza, the driver who was leading this race, is right now scored in 10th position. That puts him 28 seconds off of the race lead. So everybody in front of him, they have to wait for those drivers to come down to the pit lane for one final time. So that's about the, the group of drivers who wants to pull the strategy card. I think that green flying pit stops have been good on for a long enough time that we've separated them. So it's Reynolds, Sherburn, Shelton, Schoenberg, Fash, along with Conti, Duval, Busa, and Ottinger. Those are the drivers who have definitely mixed themselves into the conversation. And as we enter now the final 30 laps of this race, and we have enough fuel to go to the end, this final portion of tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Blue Def Diesel Exhaust Fluid, the number one selling DEF in America as we run it to the end. The race leader, Blake Reynolds, is going to continue to try to work these old tires. And well, look at all the, the quicker traffic around these guys that have stayed out. I mean, you see lapped cars unlapping themselves at a blistering pace right now. Blake Reynolds is trying to pick the points of the racetrack where cars aren't that much quicker than him and get his way out of the way as best as he possibly can. Let's see if he thinks about coming towards pit road just yet. He works his way down. No, he does not. Likely has about seven or eight laps left in that number 66, I think, on fuel. Maybe a little bit more, but he's likely to be having to come down relatively shortly. Same for all these guys who've yet to pit, but they need to run it as long as they can so they can sort of have the reverse, so they can have the overcut, so to speak, and the likes of those who are out there, Schoenberg, uh, excuse me, not Schoenberg, Luza, Hurst, Leahy, Novak, Alfala, and their tires start to go away, your tires are still nice and new, and you can work your way forward. And that's definitely obviously something that you keep in mind at the end of the run. I was talking a lot about how when the drivers make that first trip down to the pit lane, they're going to be very fast out of the gate. That's true, and it might make at least on the scoring sheet, look like a big swing. All of a sudden, you're seven seconds behind somebody that you were in front of, but of course, you got the fresher tires later. Your tires are going to last a little bit longer, and 
That's why you try to find the sweet spot. That's why, Tim, as you and I were talking about just a little bit ago, you got guys on top of the box, much smarter than we are, pushing the buttons and figuring out when that time to come down pit road was. Still, we have those seven drivers in front of Luza, and Ottinger is going to get passed up shortly, even before he makes a trip down to the pit lane, so the magic number is going to fall to six. Uh, obviously, with those drivers having a pit, those many still need to come down at a 25-second disadvantage. If those drivers could somehow make it to the end, I don't think Luza would catch them, but I don't think that they're anywhere close to being within that window, so at this point, it's a matter of time. What comes first, them running out of fuel and coming down, or maybe a late race yellow to shake things up? Yeah, you really have to play with the cards you're dealt. Michael Conti, Matt Busa coming on to pit road right now and surrendering top five positions. And you talk about some of those guys on top of the boxes, Brandon Hastings being one of those working with the Team Conti guys and working with the Gale Force Sim Racing guys. And uh, he had that strategy at Daytona, tried to play it a little bit off key, and it worked out for them there. So we'll see if they can pull any last ditch effort here as Conti works towards the box. Reynolds continues to pace this field up in front but he's gonna have to come down pit road relatively soon. Shelton and Andrew Fayash the third still out on the racetrack. They are your top three. And there's another driver, Andrew Fayash the third, who's known to stretch it on fuel, play some strategy, and come out with some good finishes out of these strategy calls. But I think he might be, uh, might be hoping for a caution here to try to get some track position. He's definitely somebody who's been known to play the strategy card. And again, getting a yellow is part of it. It's something that's most certainly out of your control. But this strategy very much banks on having something go your way. And it's a scenario where, hey, if I'm running outside of the top 20, top 30, I really don't have much to lose. But for race leader right now, Blake Reynolds, the last time he pitted was 42 laps ago. He's not going to be able to stretch this one to lap 125. You would imagine Shelton Fayash all in the same box. In fact, the 77 of Fayash is going to have to come down pit road as he finally gives up on that fight. So only Reynolds now and Shelton stand in between Ryan Luza and going back to the top of the mountain. Taylor Hurst is running right now in fifth spot. That would become second when all of this cycles through. He is running only one and a half seconds behind Ryan Luza. So keep an eye because we may not be done just yet. Definitely don't think we're going to be done just yet. Must keep an eye on this 66 of Blake Reynolds. He's going to go past pit entry yet again. So fantastic fuel economy here for the 66. And Nick Shelton is going to do the same thing as well. So these guys getting a very, very good economy as they head across the start-finish line once again. Andrew Fayash is going to be leaving his box. And Ryan Luza is going to be cycling into that third spot with the 74 Taylor Hurst just behind. Then you have Keegan Lee and Ray Alfala not far off the mark as well. A foul is somebody again who made a very spirited charge in the opening laps of this race, rocketed into the top five and still has a very fast car, but again, couldn't get that little bit more. He'll end up with possibly a top three if all of this pans out for him. He still runs in front of the likes of Novak and Logan Clampett, who is our featured driver for the race. We've had many of opportunities this evening to run on the board with Logan Clampett as he has worked his way through the field. He'll end up probably within or just shy of a top five by this one is all said and done and it all comes together nice and neatly 20 laps to go on the board this next time by and as we close into the end of this one let's take an opportunity we'll step back let's go on board with your current race leader Blake Reynolds and let's listen in on what a lap is like around the Auto Club Speedway Reynolds got up to 197 miles an hour that time, headed into turn three, 203, as he heads back off to turn number one. 
That lap time for the 66 was a 41.267 compared to the 40.424 for Ryan Michael Luza, who while sitting 19, now only 18 seconds behind him. Just waiting on taking over the top spot in this race. Reynolds now burning fumes. Nearly 45 laps into a run. He'll hold the inside of the racetrack. And there he goes. Blake Reynolds will give up the race lead at lap 107. Slides it into the box. And no lack of aggressiveness comes down pit road. So will Nicholas Shelton right behind him. That's the number 12 car just behind. So now we pick up Ryan Luza in third position. He'll come out of turn number four this time by and regain the race lead inside of 20 to go. If you weren't in a position to win the race, you had to try something good on Blake Reynolds and Nick Shelton, but it did not work out for them. Lusa back to the top of the scoring pylon and now look back to Taylor Hurst in position number two and pretty much alone right now in position number two. No pressure from behind, no pressure in front of him as he tries to chase down Ryan Lusa about a second and three quarters ahead of him. Keegan Leahy in position number three, two seconds behind Taylor Hurst. Ray Alfala and Jimmy Mullis will be your top five. And all those drivers in the top five, Evan, right now, if they can cruise to the end of this race, they might finish the way they are. If they pick up a little bit of speed, they might be able to pick up a position or two, but looks like right now they're pretty content to ride. And I think at this point, everybody's, not, not that they've accepted where they've run, but I think we talked earlier on in this with Randy about obviously drivers trying to pick up some spots where they qualified and such. This race has had, you know, plenty of green flag action to the point where I think you've had a good opportunity to feel out what you've got. You've had a couple of restarts to shake things up, a tad bit of tire strategy in there as well. I think that most of these drivers are running about where they deserve to run. Now, if we were to group everybody up, I think the top five, I might give Lusa a little bit of an advantage, but I think anybody in those top five, you look at the top eight right now, everybody in that group has very fast race cars, and anything could happen off of a restart. So I think Lusa has reasons to not want this one to get it a little bit more excited at the end as he works a comfortable 1.7 second advantage. But I think at this point now, everybody's cycled through. They've kind of landed where they expected themselves to be and out and down the laps with 110 down, 15 to go this next time by. Really, for those in the top three, I'm sure holding their breath. It's going to be the big thing, and they better be because, well, the top three is about to change. Ray Alfala has been running about two to three tenths quicker than most of these drivers, and he picks up that third spot, and that's something I think we need to talk about. That two machine is very, very quick. Keep in mind, he was one of the later pitters uh, around at lap number 90, 100 when he came down towards pit road, and because of that, he has a little bit of tire life left in that number two Flip Angle Motorsports machine, so I actually think that uh, for Ray Alfala, he, if he can maintain the speed, he might have enough to get to Taylor Hurst and even potentially to Ryan Michael Luther. The lap time last time through was about a tenth and a half in favor of Alfala and that was while passing the 24 of Leahy. Yes, so Leahy's ended up dropping down to fourth spot again. He's had a little bit of an up and down night again. Obviously led this race early, got passed by Luther shortly thereafter and had some mistakes that cost him some positions, but when he's gotten back to the top five, he hasn't really stuttered since then. Far from over here with Alfala just in front and third, and I think Jimmy Mullis is gonna make this one a fight for fourth before this thing is said and done. We're side by side for sixth. How about Logan Clamp at our featured driver of the night? Hometown kid now resided in California, and he is gonna get up on the inside of the 15 to Zach Novak, and he will take it away fight for sixth here in the closing laps. And just behind them, we saw a couple moments ago, we've got a quick, quick glimpse of the battle back here for about ninth and 10th place. Uh, we talk about drivers riding. These guys are working on a caution flag right now. Bobby Zielinski to the inside of the one of Marcus Richardson trying to take that position back. Chalner is there, Casey Kerwin is there, and David Rattler having a great run to really start off this season. Uh, a strong run to kick off this 2018 season for the 09, but Zielinski about five laps ago slapped the wall, lost the position to Marcus Richardson, got that position back, and now Richardson pushing him down the front straightaway. Christian Chalner right there as well, and this has been an entertaining battle, Evan, but one small misstep by one of these drivers is gonna bunch this field up. They're, they're working on a caution flag here. Yeah, and the crew chiefs, I'm sure, and the teams and the guys up front just want us to get the cameras away. They do not want to watch this. Five cars throw a blanket over them. In the closing laps here tonight from Fontana, in front of it is Zelensky. 
Try to get away, then the water Richardson, the 70 at a challenger, and now side by side with David Rattler coming up the inside on the 14 of Casey Kerwin. They are far from letting this run just run out of time and expire. Want to get their money's worth out of this thing as we close it on 10 to go. It is the closest group of five cars anywhere on track. It's about 11 and a half seconds off of the race lead. The 78 of Challenger is going to look up the inside of Richardson and make short work of that. Bobby Zlinski was the first car to get clear and said, thank you very much. And it's going to be very, very tight as the 09 of David Rattler made a move on Casey Kerwin as well. Casey's going to look to maybe respond as they head towards quarters number three and four, but not going to make anything of it as one machine of Richardson. He's going to pull alongside the 78 of Challenger. Uh, oh, I should say it's the other way around. The 78 looking up to the top side of Richardson. Not going to, I think, be able to do anything with, with that just yet as your pace is pretty much equaled out amongst your top drivers. Went from thinking that Ray might have the speed to catch some of these guys, but tires pretty much just dropped away on him, and now he's basically just gotten even. And we've got a car pulling way down to the inside groove down the back straight. That's Kenny Humpy. I think that's partially getting rid of that blue flag appearing in the top left corner of the screen. He may have gotten a little loose off of two as well. But well, the one thing we have to keep in mind as well is, Tim, this feels like a lot shorter of a run than it really is because we were waiting on all of those cars to finally come down to the pit lane. It kind of looked like a 20-lap sprint to the end once Luza got it back up front. But these drivers all pitted with about 35 laps to go or so. So what Randy was saying is exactly right is we are really on the longer end of a pretty good stretch. We look back, nearly two full green flag runs since we were last in there was slow pace when drivers came down to the pit lane. So the tires are really wearing off at this point, even though it might not seem like it just because we spent a lot of time kind of waiting for drivers to run out their clock and finally decide to drop down. So it was a very long green flag window, but all of these drivers up front pretty much pitted at the start of it all. And a great rhythm to this race as well. As you mentioned, about halfway, these drivers came down pit road under caution. And they had that green flag pit stop, and now we're less than 10 laps to go this time by for Ryan Luza, who has that 1.8 second lead on Taylor Hirsch. You continue to watch that battle back there. Casey Kerwin trying to make up a couple positions late in this one. Closest battle on the racetrack with multiple cars. We have a couple of two and three car battles throughout the pack, but it looks like for the most part, knock on wood, this five car battle has subsided, but we still got laps left in this race. You can never know how one of these things is going to pan out. Lap 117 of 125 in the works. Randy, just a little bit shy of an hour and a half since we took the American Ethanol green flag at the start of this one. And I can promise you, even though, yes, the lap times are a little bit slower because of the tires for Ryan Luce specifically, these are feeling like the longest laps of the race, just trying to get to the end. Taylor Hurst isn't catching him at all. As you see, Rattler now go to the inside of Chris. Christian Chalidar in a fight for 10th. Lusa just wants this one to end, but that number is getting ever so slowly to 125, a lot slower than I'm sure he would like. It's a big thing right now for Ryan Michael Lusa. It's sort of the nervous uh, point of the race right here, right now, because you're in that stage where if a caution flies, you're getting a one to two lap restart. And here in a couple laps, it's going to, I think, take a lot of weight off that number six's shoulders because he has such a big lead. I don't think there's any way Taylor Hurst who's going to be able to get to him. I think that six car should be confident enough in himself to know that he's not going to throw this thing into the wall coming off one of these corners and potentially choke away a big win. But for Ryan Michael Luza, here in the next two laps, I think, are the really last point for him where he really needs to be nervous about this race potentially getting turned upside down on him. One more lap behind as we can get to lap 121. I think Luza will breathe a little bit more of a sigh of relief because that would be the pointed overturn where if you get to four laps to go or less, a yellow flag would end this race. There is no sort of overtime system in effect in this NASCAR Pekana Freeze iRacing Series. So four laps to go or less would not give us an opportunity to run through our yellow flag cycle, open, close pit lane, and get set for restart. This race would end under caution flag condition so even if for loser he only gonna have to hold his breath for maybe four more laps as soon as he's up the driver assuming uh, that he makes that mistake at the end he'll should be fine and first again Alfala all very much separated from one another Mullis all by himself Leahy's kind of gotten in no man's land as well eighth on back is where it gets fun but everybody in the top seven have at least one second in between each car and really, the only battle within the top 10 right now, Zelinski has pulled away from Chalder, who's battling with David Rattler right now. That's the only real battle within the top 10. 
there's a couple of two and three car battles outside this battle for position number 10, the final top 10 position here at Auto Club. But for the most part, everybody is uh, trying to get to the end of this race. Maybe pick up a position or two, but those top nine definitely have some space in between them. The closest battle near the front of the field is this one you're seeing on your screen. Chalner trying to hold off David Rattler. Rattler a little slide down there into corner number one and two. And started off the race strong, trying to finish it strong. Started 11th, finished 11th. Rattler wants a top 10. Atler wants to hang on to that if he can. He just needs to get those extra four tenths of a second up and get around Christian Challoner. Challoner has been a little bit busy in these last few laps, trying to hold off for a couple of positions here and there. And you can definitely see Rattler close enough to strike. He just needs that little bit extra. For Ryan to Michael Lewis, they're working now, lap 122. You can see the laps continue to count on the left-hand side of your screen. The full running order go by on the top of your screen. But this time by, he will take three laps to go. He is inside of the home stretch in that point of no return. He just needs three more clean laps to the end. And he has about half of a turn to the next car in front of him. So no lap traffic a concern either. And just three more laps here at the place that Penske built for Ryan Michael Luva. And he has more than enough time in the rearview mirror. Not even really have to push with it. And he's, well, he's still going quicker than that car running in second of Taylor Hurst as well. So for Ryan Michael Luva, who had such a strong rookie season last year, put on a dominating performance through the mid midpoint of the season, and then was so good in the, in the playoff rounds late in that championship to be home, to be able to take home that championship in his rookie season as he heads towards three and four. More than enough experience in that six car, I think, to be fully confident in himself. He's going to be looking at pop school sticks in the air. Two to go at this one. He's going to be winner of round number three here at Fontana. It has it been all fantastic for the loser camp coming into tonight. Obviously, we talked about the likes of Leahy, top five in Daytona, a win last week to lead the championship coming into tonight. But he is not in the top ten in points entering this one. He needs runs like this in these opening races into the regular season to be able to get himself into that new playoff format for later this year, Tim. And Ryan Luzer, we talked about him up in front, battling with that injury that he had sustained a couple weeks ago. This might make it feel just a little bit better, but those guys behind, I'm sure, are going to be hurting a little bit more and are going to try to get a little more in Vegas. Luza up at a four. He'll come to the white. One more lap to go for Ryan Michael Luza. The conversation at least coming into tonight as he enters lap 125. Was all the momentum in favor of Keegan Leahy? Could Leahy go back to back? Could he be the driver who gets the first multiple win on the year? Not only is Ryan Luzer going to become the third different winner in three races on 2018, but he'll also become the first ever multi-time winner here in Fontana in the history of this NASCAR Piquetta Freeze Racing Series. Took it home last year in 2017, as Randy had just mentioned, maybe a good omen because he went on later that season to take the championship. He's on the right foot once more, and he'll come to four for the final time. Ryan Lewis is going to take his first win of 2018. Winner tonight from Auto Club. What a fantastic run from that number six car. Rest of your drivers are cycling their way through. We got one fight towards the end. Challoner and Rattler. Challoner's going to be able to hold on to that top ten. There's a couple other drivers running their way through. 66 of Blake Reynolds, by the way, after that late pit stop. He managed to recover his way up towards the top 20 finish. He comes home 19th. Good results for a handful of drivers. Uh, the likes of Leahy are able to maintain top five runs. Of course, big movers. Bobby Zelensky ends up at positive 20. So does Casey Kerwin. So two drivers put the honors for the Hard Charger Award here tonight. You can see all the drivers come up to congratulate Ryan Michael Luza, the 24 machine I just mentioned, and Keegan Leahy, the driver who started on pole, coming up to say congratulations and a little bit of a hello that time at turn four. And X machine going to be the lone driver that gets to go around that one final time. Ryan Michael Luza's got some celebrating to do, maybe trying to get 2018 back onto the right track. He will burn it down on the front straightaway. Third different winner in three races in 2018, and your defending series champion is back in victory lane. Yeah, great to see the six car back to performance where he was last year. And I know it's way too early to talk about points, Evan, but he had a good night. Ray Alfala had a good night. They're former champions of the series. They know how to get it done. But coming into tonight, Nick Ottinger, Michael Conti, Dylan Duvall, all within the 
top five in the point standings. They all finished by the looks of it outside the top 20. It's too early to really talk about points to lock yourselves into the playoffs. But if you can take one mulligan, you're going to probably look at Auto Club for some of those drivers. First 13 rounds of this regular season, all about qualifying for the playoffs, and then we'll enter a new five round format. It'll take us to the final five weeks of the season, of course, leading up to the season finale at Homestead. At any time you can take points, especially early in the year where they might get overlooked, you'll take it. And Ryan Luza is your winner tonight from Fontana. We'll go trackside, get some post race reaction in just a moment. Before we do so, let's look top to bottom and take a look at tonight's full race results. Ryan Luza gets the win first for him on 2018 with Taylor Hurst coming home in the number two position. Ray Alfala comes home third tonight. Jimmy Mullis is fourth. And Keegan Leahy rounds out through your top five. It's Logan Clampett in P6. Zach Novak in seventh. Brad Davies eighth. Bobby Zelensky ninth. And Christian Chalita rounds out your top ten. Barely missing the top 10. It's David Rattler in position number 11, Casey Kerwin in 12th, Marcus Richardson, Brandon Pipgrass, and Cody Bias complete your top 15. Colton Davis in 16th, Chris Overland, one of those drivers that stayed out late, tried to get that pitch strategy to work for him. Comes home in position number 17, Derek Bordeaux in 18th, 19th is Blake Reynolds and completing your top 20. It's the 10 at Corey Vincent. Last time out, our featured driver, Nolan Scott, didn't have a good run at Phoenix, managed to get a good run here in California. He comes home 21st, Nick Shelton 22nd, Joe Letterello 23rd, Chris Shearburn 24th, Michael Connie 25th, after starting 7th, not a good day for him. Timmy Hill 26th, Phil Diaz 27th, Casey Tucker, Jake Sturgios, and the 55 of Brian Schoenberg, after being out front early in this one, he comes home 30th. That boost is going to end up first on the deck page here in 31st position. Dylan Duvall is 32nd. Ryan Lowe, 33rd. Michael Gans, 34th. And Yarl Tien, 35th. That all round out the drivers on the lead lap. 35 of 40, an impressive number over the course of 250 miles. One lap down, going to be 36th through 38th position. That's Nick Ottinger in 36th. Andrew Fash, the third and 37th. And Alex Bergeron in 38th. The two drivers who did not make it all the way home tonight. Kenny Humpy in 39th. And Adam Gilliland in 40th position. We'll take another quick opportunity to step aside. When we come back, we head to victory lane. Ryan Luza, your winner tonight for the Fontana at Auto Club Speedway in the NASCAR Peak Antifreeze iRacing Series at Race Spot TV and iRacing Live. PU 402, row 41. Jimmy Johnson, the fans has got in the wind. Section 104, row 4. Blaney got in the first win. Section 25, row 3. What a year for Bubba. Section 0, row 25. Keselowski is going to win at Talladega. Section 156, row 4. Kurt Busch to the lead on the back stretch. Section 233, row 1. Martin Truex Jr. wins. You get a seat, but we doubt you'll ever use it. Grab your seats at nascar.com slash tickets today.